This video is sponsored by Loop Deck. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Ineos Alea, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create the multiverse portal effect from the latest Doctor Strange movie. <laughs> You okay? We went to see it with all the interns together in the cinema and it was a lot of fun, great movie, interesting ideas. What do you think? Are we living in a multiverse? Anyway, the movie was so full of visual effects that I got inspired every single second of that movie. It was actually really hard coming up with a tutorial that I wanted to work out because I basically want to do so much from that movie. Anyway, one effect in particular really caught my eye and that's, spoiler alert, the portal effect to swap multiverses. Yeah, pretty cool. So we're going to see how to create that today in Adobe After Effects. Obviously the one in the movie is fully 3D, but I think the one we can achieve in Adobe After Effects after Effects is coming pretty damn close. All right, let's get started. As usual, if you want to follow along with the exact same footage as me, you can find those files with the link in the description below so you can follow along with this tutorial. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and this is the footage that we will be working on. Um, right here, I make my jump and I land like I'm coming out of the portal, coming to the camera, say something stupid and leave the frame. Then I have another file here, which is just a nature landscape type of shot. Uh, for this, I found this on Pexels, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, that's completely up to you. So the first thing that I wanna do is bring my footage into a new composition, and then I'm going to find a spot where I land out of the portal, which is right here. Then I'm going over to edit and split my layers, so I separate the two layers, and I'm going to bring this one on top. So now what we want to do is remove myself from the shot. So um, before the portal actually opens, we have an empty shot and then I actually uh, fly through it. So to remove myself, you have a lot of options to do this, but the best way is using Mocha AE, which comes in Adobe After Effects. So it's not a plugin. Um, so you can just find that either right here or by going to effects and presets and searching Mocha AE. It's one of the most powerful, um, yeah, planner trackers and I really use it all the time. And so this is a way of applying the effect to your footage. But another cool way of applying effects and a much more intuitive way and faster way, let's say you really do this as a job or you do this all the time and you just want to have a quick workflow for very specific tasks, is this little tool that I have lying around and today's video sponsor, Loop Deck. The Loop Deck Live is a really awesome tool to improve your productivity and do tasks faster. For example, it works with every single software or even your operating system. Or if you live stream, you can use it for that to optimize your live stream functions and the things that you can do with this are pretty much endless because as you can see right here you have the loop deck live and you also have the profile for Adobe After Effects that you can fully customize right here. Here are the knobs where you can turn on they feel super sturdy and you really feel the click with every step so it's really amazing if you want to go frame by frame and I must say after using this that um, it's a really nice feeling when I'm adjusting things and I feel like it's very very subtle and live so it's real time and I literally feel like I have more control than if I would do this with a mouse drag on those sliders. So you can turn on these knobs and completely customize each individual uh, one of them. So in After Effects, they're um, optimized for very specific things like zooming into the timeline, going back and forward one frame and stuff like that. But you can also press them and make them do things when you press these knobs. So they also function as a uh, an extra button, let's say. And then right here, you have these menus that you can even get into. So you literally have like these infinite menus within the loop deck so let's say that you're animating something in Adobe After Effects you want to be in this menu let's say you're doing color grading you want to be in this menu and so on and so on anyway there is so much to talk about when it comes to the loop deck live but I want to really focus on the tutorial now but if you want to find out more about the loop deck live I will link it in the description below but the first reason that I actually brought it up was to apply the effect right now in Adobe After Effects so let's do that so right here I can press the Mocha AE and automatically that's going to apply the effect to my layers. Anyway, let's open up Mocha AE and make sure that you're working in full resolution. So you can see that I'm primarily uh, running on this side of the screen. So what I want to do is find a spot where I'm not covering the entire screen and just take a um, bigger yeah, like a square or rectangle like so. And then just right click to deselect your selection or to finalize your selection. Make sure you are at the beginning of your timeline. And then I'm also going to check perspective here and track forward. All right, so once that's done, we can go back to the first frame 
and we want to click here on surface or show planner surface and that's going to show this grid here or this rectangle and we want to expand this planner surface to the full view uh, window here so that way we're going to cover the first frame make sure that this is the first frame otherwise this is not going to work and then we can close mocha and save this now what i want to do is duplicate my original footage here edit duplicate and because we added the mocha effect it's also on our duplication now we want to right click here go to time and freeze this frame and now we want to go to mocha go into the tracking data create tracking data and click ok so now that's imported and then right here export option we want to select corner pin and we want to export to this layer right here we can also rename it to make it easier uh, this is frozen frame and then uh, it's also going to export to frozen frame. There we go, apply the export, and you can see the keyframes being applied. So now we have this file here where the background is basically following the movement, but it's frozen. So we can now double click on this layer and remove myself using the clone stem tool. So I'm going to click on that. You can also change your brush size right here. So by going to the brush tool and changing the pixels a little bit, you can do that there. And then I'm going to just alt click here to make a sample and paint away. All right. So go back to your composition now. And we want to select our ellipse tool now to make a mask here. So I'm going to drag a mask out, hold control to start from the center and just um, increase it until myself is disappearing. Then press F on the keyboard, feather it just a little bit. There we go. Now we have the first few frames where I'm invisible. Now I'm going to also enable motion blur because there's quite a bit of movement in my shot and that's going to integrate this even better. And so now we have something like that. Now we need to duplicate the shot once again. So this original clip here, duplicate, control D, bring it all the way on the top and we're going to delete the mocha effect we don't need it anymore now i'm going to double click on this and this time we want to roto uh, scope myself so we're going to choose here the roto brush tool and then zoom in a little bit on myself and start drawing like this and try to make a pretty perfect selection here of yourself the better the first frame is going to be the better your final result is really make the ai understand who you are where you're at before they take us over before it's too late. We're all gonna die. <laughs> okay, so now frame by frame forward. So it seems to do a pretty decent job at rotoscoping myself. It's also not the biggest deal to be perfect. But yeah, again, check every frame. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going by 10 frames. So holding shift, page done. You can also do this with the loop deck and actually do it like this. Look at how smooth I can go frame forward. Maybe that's not the best thing to do while you're roto brushing. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's really nice to navigate through the entire timeline here. Okay, so once you're done at the end and it looks all right, well, actually the last frame here, we can freeze this roto. All right, so now we're done. And what you can also do is check here what the render time is going to be by clicking on this button right here. And that's really going to be helpful to see if we need to bake something. And you can see that this is um, rendering rather slowly at, at certain times. So if you want, you can solo this layer and export this with a transparent background. Uh, so you can re-import this and it's going to make your uh, project a lot faster. So this is a technique that you can do if you have a slower end PC uh, to follow along. So I'm not going to do that. I don't think it's necessary for my case, but yeah. I would be doing that if I would uh, be working in higher resolutions, for example. So we have now this roto and basically what we've done is we have removed the background and placed myself back in. So now we can um, actually clip it wherever we are coming through the portal. So maybe right here, I'm going to clip it and then we're jumping out. That's awesome, super awesome. And right here we have a little bit of a jank, but that's not the biggest issue, I think. Uh, also together with the portal, it's going to be barely no noticeable. So now let's start focusing on this portal. Let's create a new composition and make this 2000 by 2000. This is going to be our star comp. Now I want to double click on the star and now we have a shape for this star. If we open up the star, we can completely modify it as well. So we can open up the poly star right here and we can play with the inner radius. 
and we can play with the auto radius. So let's say we want the auto radius and inner radius to be like this, but maybe after one second. And then we want to animate it a little bit. So you could do that as well. Maybe you want it to open up like this. So that's also pretty cool. And now we want to go over to the stroke, set this to none, and then go into the fill right here and set this to white. So now we have this little star. And so now we want to duplicate our star comp. So we have actually two. And what I want to do here is um, I want to concentrate uh, this time on the stroke. So now I'm going to remove the fill. And on this one, I'm going to apply a stroke. I'm going to increase the stroke quite a bit. So now we have this to be working with and just making sure that it's a little bit too high. So I'm going to hold shift and press, well, actually move tool, click on my layer and shift down, down and down and down. So four times, five times. Okay, so I'm going back to this one, click on this one, two, three, four, five. And there we go, also holding shift, just so it's in the exact same spot. And actually I want it to be in the center, so we should have checked that first. So to do that, you can click here on title action save, and now it's not in the center. So now I'm going to click here and go over to my align here and center this star out and do the same for this one. So now right here, I'm going to import this star and I'm going to place this over the time of 10, like 10 frames, I want it to open up. So right here, it should be landing. So maybe it should open up here. Well, actually I want it to start here. So I'm going to just bring it over here and I'm going to press S on the keyboard and hold shift, press P on the keyboard. Uh, and there we go. We have the position and scale now. I'm, I'm going to create a keyframe for the scale and I'm just going to position it here right now. So now I'm going to bring this over here and scale this star down quite a bit. I'm also going to trim my work area a little bit. So I'm going to press B on the keyboard and I'm going to press N on the keyboard right here. So I can just concentrate on this part right here. So we have the star opening up. And so now I'm going to duplicate the star comp and I'm going to take the other one and hold Alt, drag this on top. That's going to replace this. So now we also have one with a stroke doing the exact same thing, which we will need. So this we're going to be using later. Um, I'm going to duplicate this one more time now and I'm going to rename it to star particle generator. Add this generator also to the composition here or actually we need to do the exact same thing and duplicate this and hold, hold alt, drag this on top of it. So now we are going to uncheck the other two and just concentrate on the particle generator. So we now just have the stroke. And basically what this is going to do is generate particles from whatever we see in this layer. So we have to turn this into a 3D layer and then right click and new, create a new solid, or I'm going to be using solid on the loop deck. It's a faster way, particles. And right here, I'm going to add particular, which is a plugin from Red Giant. And so now we need to go into the emitter and change the emitter type from point to layer. Increase the particles per second to 1000 just so we can initially see what we're doing. I'm also going to solo this layer so we see exactly what is going on here. And for the layer emitter, we want to choose the star particle generator layer. And there we go. So now it should start generating some particles. We can increase this particles per second even to 10,000 to really see what's going on. And now you can play with this velocity. Maybe the velocity is okay. Well, actually I'm going to just play these particles and try to find a nice animation that I like. Then I also wanna go over to the particle uh, physics simulations and go into this place and um, turbulence field and play a little bit with the XYZ displacement. And I'm going to open up the environment here and play with the air density a little bit. And that's basically going to make the particles stop a little bit faster after they're being pushed out. <coughs> and that's looking all right. Now we can go into the particle tab right here and now choose a particle that is actually going to look good. Uh, so right here, I wanna go into the opacity over life and just expand this a little bit, use a preset that is ramping down like this. That's going to make them fade out smoothly. And now for the particle type, I'm going to use a sprite. And the cool thing is that Red Giant offers you, or actually Particular offers you to choose a sprite from their own library so you don't have to go and find one. And they have a bunch of cool ones to actually ch check out and, and use for this instance. 
Uh, for example, for my purpose, I think I went for this one right here because it's 3D, uh, it looks detailed and um, yeah, it looks like it could be a crystal as well. So I'm going to be using that and click OK. I'm going to increase the size here to something like 25, the size random to something like 25. This may be at 15. So it's always playing around a little bit. We can also play with the opacity random at 50. And we can even play with a blending mode of screen. And so something like this is pretty cool. Maybe you want to add even more particles by adding another zero, but I would only do this in later stages because this is going to slow down your system. Maybe we don't need that many. I'm going to uh, remove the first and yeah, just make 50,000. So this is it for the particles. Obviously you can change them later even more like color grading it a little bit and making it blend even better with your footage. Uh, but now uh, we have something like this. We can also uncheck the particle generator. We actually don't need to see it even. So we can put this away and tuck it away by checking uh, this hide all the layers which have this checked on. And I'm also going to rename these comps quickly. So this is going to be my shape. So comp shape and the other one is comp stroke just so I know what I'm working with. Uh, right here we have the shape, so I'm going to turn on the shape so we can see what we're doing. And I'm also going to import that other background here that we have lying around. Uh, you can turn this into a 3D layer if you want. We can also animate this a little bit if, you, if you'd like. Uh, push it back in Z space maybe. Um, but just press P on the keyboard and do it like this. There we go. Maybe scale it up just a little bit. There we go. And now place this below that shape layer and then choose for this layer the alpha matte function and now we can see the background through this. So now if we place this a little bit differently, we're going to see like we have a different background here. Uh, one problem with the particles here is that we don't see the um, center here. So open up the particle generator. So what we can do here is uh, just make the inner radius a little bit more like this. And uh, let's see what we have like this. That's a little bit better, a little bit more subtle, but we do have a few in the beginning here. So another thing that you could do is just lessen the life of these particles. I'm also going to animate the size here. So opacity over life, you also have size over life and do the exact same thing. Maybe I would actually prefer this over the opacity. So bring the opacity back up. And now we have more uh, an animation like this. And I'm also going back into the particle generator and me maybe increase the stroke effect a little bit, just not too much. And come back. So now we have a bigger surface uh, with particle spawning. Now I'm going to bring my roto here. I'm also going to call this roto. Maybe turn it into a different color and bring this all the way on top. And now right here in this moment, in the last frame, I'm going to press P on the keyboard and press S on the keyboard and create a keyframe for both of these. Then go to the first um, moment or like the beginning of myself, like scale it down quite a bit. So then you have something like this where you're actually coming through. One little problem now is that we do have animation here in our scene and we need to track our star. I'm not going to be doing a 3D camera track because I'm just too lazy. I'm just going to right click new and create a new null object and rename this to track data. And then I'm going to my footage here, extend it all the way so I have an entire clip, double click on it and go all the way to the beginning, add Mocha AE. Again, I'm going to be using the loop deck, open up Mocha AE. And I'm just going to select this little spot here and just play this backwards. And then just close it and save that. Go into tracking data, create that tracking data for that layer. And then go into the export option, set it to transform, set it to the layer track data and apply. Now we can select all the uh, layers that have to, well, regarding the portal and parent these to the track data. And now if you play this, we get something like this. And because we didn't parent the background, we already get a little bit of a parallax in there. 
By the way, if you think the shape looks a little bit too straight, what I do is go back into the star shape comp, add an adjustment layer to this and add a roughen edges to the star. And then increase this as you wish. If you want even more of the rough edge, I would suggest to add a fast box blur. Bring that before and increase the box blur. And like this, you create a really distorted star. This is also a cool way to make your portal. And so right here, I want to um, remove the portal. So I'm going to click here on the scale and set it to zero. Or you can actually double click here and extend the roto a little bit because I think it's a little bit too short. So I'm quickly going to extend it by unfreezing it and just adding a few more frames here. All right, so go back to your composition right here. And now we have a, a longer version of that roto. So now we have time to close the portal a little, little bit further. So set it to zero. There we go. And the same for the particles. So in this case, we're going to literally scale it with them. So I'm just going to parent it to that uh, star comp. So right here, it's the same size. And when it's going to scale down, it's also going to scale the particles. So that's already looking pretty cool. Now we can concentrate on this stroke effect. So let's uh, enable that. We can also go into the shape here, the shape layer, copy that adjustment layer, go into the stroke and paste it here. So we get that rough and edges effect, obviously maybe not as intense, um, but like this, you also get some pretty cool results. Uh, and this is going to be our highlight. So maybe the stroke, we can click on the shape here for the stroke and make it smaller. So, so like that, we get some highlights here. We can apply um, to this stroke layer, a tint effect. And then add blue. And then also play with the blending modes by pressing F4 on the keyboard. And also again, um, add this to the star comp right here. And actually do that for these two, um, because basically you're going to follow this one as well. So um, basically this one is following the track data and these ones are following this one. So basically they're all following the same one. And so now just before that the portal opens, something that happens in the movie is this glass shatter effect. And so to do that, what you can do is duplicate that um, clean plate or the frozen frame that we had in the beginning right here. I'm going to duplicate that and bring it, well actually leave it in spot, but just make it shorter. So maybe a few frames before I enter the shot here, we basically want to make a little shape here. So I'm going to delete this mask and this is going to be our glass shatter. And you can just simply create a little shape of shatter. And so one thing that we need to do is um, to make this work is delete the corner pin. So hold control and press X and then hold, um, well, control shift C to pre-comp it. And we're going to call this glass shatter, click OK. And then paste the corner pin data back to this. And now open up this comp and use this mask that we have and set it to Close, there we go. But obviously we also have this paint problem. So to do that, we can also remove that or fix it or just uh, delete the mask, control X, create a new solid, click okay, or again. And then I'm going to use this as an alpha mat and just uh, look through it. So now we have this background showing and we have this glass shatter, which is also moving according our footage. So that's exactly what we wanted. So let's go back into this footage and now concentrate on this glass shatter. So right here, I want to add the shatter effect that we have right here, apply that. And we want to check wireframe and go into the shape and change the bricks to glass. Now press here on the origin and put it more in the center. And we can also increase the repetition so we have a lot more going on. And if we're going to play this, we're going to see that it's immediately impacting. So we don't want that. We want it to start like around here. So we want to set the size here of the force. So the depth and the strength, set the strength to zero. Keyframe it and move forward, set the strength to five. I'm also going over to the physics and set the gravity to zero. So we cannot um, animate the strength. So I'm going to set it back to five, but I'm going to animate the radius here. So I'm going to uh, 
wireframe plus forces. And so now we see the radius nicely here. Put that in the center as well. And create a keyframe. So right here, press U on the keyboard to move that keyframe over. And then we're going to make the radius smaller. There we go. One thing that I want to do is um, also remove the shatter here and pre-comp, so on Control X to cut it away, and pre-comp these two together. So the shatter is actually, um, shatter comp. So the shatter is actually being applied to the entire layer and that's just going to give us better results here. So if we set this to rendered, we're going to see that it's going to be something like this. But obviously we need to move these keyframes back into position. And so this is ideal. Let's go back to our main comp and now we have this glass shatter, which we can bring somewhere just before the portal opens. And actually we should not move this, we should just uh, look at the animation. And so now if you're going to play this here, it's going to shatter just before the portal opens. And I'm just going to trim it so it starts right here. And if we unsolo this, we're going to see that it's indistinguishable for them from the background. But it looks like the background is being shattered just seconds before, or like yeah, milliseconds before the portal actually opens up. And right here, we want to add a um, flare. So to add a flare, you have multiple ways of doing that. But I'm going to add a new solid, again, using my loop deck. And I'm also going to add the optical flares plugin, uh, again, through my loop deck. So there we have it. And I'm going to apply this in the right position here. Also apply this all the way on top and set the blending mode to screen. Then set the scale to zero or for the brightness, click on the keyframe, move one frame and set it pretty strongly or even here. Actually right here, it should be very intense. Boom, it's exploding and set it back to zero. Maybe you also want to add a little bit of movement to the position. So create a keyframe for the position and just move it slightly over to the center again. Something like this. Another fun thing that I've done, and it's just a detail, but I'm really giving you a lot of value here. So I'm going to duplicate this shatter and then jump into the shatter, click on this original clip here, copy that, go all the way back and paste it back here. Now I'm going to trim it again on the same location and I'm going to delete the shatter effect, go to my glass shatter, copy the corner pin and go to the beginning and paste the corner pin. So basically now I should have something that is exactly the same as my shatter, it's just not shattering. So hopefully that's somewhat alike and it's actually not, it's like it's not applying the right corner pin. So I'm going to apply the corner pin from here. And so that does fix it. So now we have one in uh, the center. So this is going to be shape solid and then the glass shatter below it. And so basically the reason why I've done this is so I can now select these two and unsolo them, control shift C to pre-compose them. And this is going to be my radial map. And so this is going to be opened up, right click new and create a new solid, make it white and bring it under the shape solid and set it to alpha matte. So now we have this white solid. If we bring this below the glass shatter, we can turn the glass shatter into a fill effect and black. So now we have like just the inside of the explosion. So now we have this really cool effect and that's exactly what I wanted. So I just want to go over to the um, solid here and just use a simple choker to extend my map a little bit because we do have this line here. You can fix that by increasing the simple choker. Okay, so now we have something like this, looks great. On this white solid layer, I want to add a fractal noise. And now I have some noise patterns in there where I want to increase the contrast a little bit and then alt click on the stopwatch for the evolution, time times 200. So now we have some animation in that noise. Again, you could actually animate this noise and make it follow also um, the background, but I don't think that matters too much. Uh, maybe we just want to animate it a little bit faster or we don't want to animate it at all. Well, let's just go for 100. And let's go back now, right here. So what I want to do here is apply an effect to my radial map and that's the effect CC Radial Fast Blur. 
So I'm going to set it to brightest and put the center point right here. Maybe if you want, you can also use this uh, track data, press P on the keyboard, go to the radial map, I'll click on the center and parent that to the position of the track data. So now we have movement in uh, our radial blur. So now go to the radial map and increase this to something insane. And now we have something like this before it shatters. We can actually make it grow. So click on the amount. And I'm not going to parent it to the track data. I'm just going to manually animate it. Okay, I'm going to also add a tint effect to this one here and add a blue color. And now we get something like this and change the blending mode to screen. And now for the particles, we also want to play around with them a little bit more. Uh, we want to add a curves to them, maybe a tint. Okay, so for the tint, I'm just going to set it to something like 25. And for the curves, I'm just going to head over to the blue, push the blues and remove a little bit of the reds even more. And also I'm going to lift a little bit these shadows here. And then you can also um, add a glow here. So what you can do is add perfect glow here. but then you do have to set it to a screen mode. You can always duplicate your particles and remove the glow from these. And set it back to normal. And maybe even darken these quite a bit to really get that color pop back. And then for these other particles, we can play with the um, glow now to make it look all nice. There we have something like this. So now what we want to do is uh, we want to add some screen shake. And for that, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to bring this all the way on the top and add a TC shake. And I'm going to add a shake and search for shake right here, CC, CG perfect shake, which is a preset from our website. We can then, uh, well, actually just animate the strength here and set it to 80. Go back a few frames right here, set it to zero and go quite a bit further and set it also to zero. So now if you look, we have something like this. You can always jump into the speed graph and bring this in. And there we go. Uh, maybe we want to increase the speed here to something like 10. Also uncheck comp shutter angle and set the shutter angle to 180. That's going to add a little bit of motion blur to the scene and make things more realistic and more drastic. Okay, really cool. So now the last things that you can do uh, to really sell this effect is create a new solid uh, again. This is going to be our lightning and add the advanced lightning effect to this layer and set it to strike. Go into the glow settings and set the opacity to zero and then like bring it on the sides here. And we're just basically going to create some ripples in space time. So I'm going to play here with the expert settings and set the complexity, for example, to something like four to have something more simple or five. Five looks good. And we want less forking, just a little bit of detail. And maybe we also want a fractal noise applied to this. So we have a little bit of contrast here and increasing the brightness but like that we create some variation in this uh, look. Then I'm going to add a tint effect and I'm going to add the color blue. And then I'm going to add a solid composite or it's actually, yeah, I'm going to add a solid composite here, set it to black. The reason I'm doing that is so the glow is going to look a lot more intense and then add the perfect glow. So you can see how quickly I'm adding effects here, uh, but imagine doing all of these effects all at once with a single button on the loop deck. Um, that's also pretty neat. So I'm going to increase here the intensity until I'm satisfied. And so basically what you see is that it comes on the screen for a few seconds and it just stays in exactly that spot. So it doesn't really do much. 
uh, except actually moving according to the track. So I'm just going to parent it to the track data and then duplicate it and then add a few other ones on different locations. And so I'm going to trim the um, backplate a little bit and then I'm also going to go over to my roto and add a curves and click on the stopwatch for the curves right here. Go back a little bit and just increase this drastically and go into the blue and increase that drastically and go into the green or actually the red and remove this and also go into the RGB maybe increase the blacks here. Something like this. And now it's going to animate and coming, uh, well, to its normal color at the end. So it's actually like I'm more coming from inside. And that's looking great. So now all you should do is check if everything has motion blur applied to it. Uh, that needs to have motion blur applied to it. And now to finalize things, you can always do a sky replacement. You can add some final compositing or also add some reflection. So I'm just going to add some reflection uh, to the entire thing. And actually to um, add reflection, what I like to do is uh, duplicate my original footage and bring that all the way on top and turn this into a tint and then add a curves or levels and really crush it a little bit here in the, in the front. So get a lot of detail in uh, in the ground. Something like this looks great. Uh, maybe a little bit more of the black parts. There we go. And if you press F4, we can now apply this with a Luma Matte, the reflection layer. And you're not going to see anything from the get-go, but if you add a tint now um, and you add a bluish color, you're going to see that it's now only in certain areas. So now we pick a ellipse tool and create a circle just like this. Press F on the keyboard and then feather it. We can now set it to an additive. We're going to have a much more realistic looking uh, reflection. And then I'm also going to add one more final adjustment layer with a nice curves and a tint just to make everything pop a little bit. And that brings us to this awesome result. So we had an incredible tutorial this time, really long, but very true. If you didn't make it through everything, that's just fine. Don't feel too bad about it. Maybe try it again another time because it's quite heavy what we've done today. And if you did manage to create some results, do share them with me on Instagram and tag me at Ineas Alea. I'm really curious to see what you guys can come up with. Apart from that, I'm going to leave you with another video of mine right here. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. Also, check out the loop deck. It's really awesome. Link is in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos.